complexity theory today we'll be discussing uh, one of the important problems in mathematics and computer science so in connection to that first uh, let me uh, overview on what we have already discussed about uh, you know regarding time bounded uh, turing machines and uh, in that context we have talked about a class of uh, languages which are decidable in time t time uh, time t the class time t we have introduced the notation which is representing which is to denote the class of turing decidable languages of course decidable languages which is the time parameter t so in decidable in time t that we have introduced now let me just uh, uh, quickly review some of the uh, fundamentals related to the polynomials if i consider a polynomial say a0 plus a1n plus a2n square and so on plus ad n power d where d is the degree of this polynomial i'll assume ad not equal to 0 if i call this polynomial say fn you know clearly that fn is in the class n power d this big o notation you all might know now moreover you can see that this is in the class theta n power d so so this is of uh, this polynomial fn is of same rate of growth with the polynomial just n power d in so in fact you can look at that this class theta n power d you know in this uh, in this class you have those polynomials of degree d and uh, in this context you may uh, understand that the polynomial fn is in the big o class of n power d plus 1 or maybe higher uh, number than d but this if you take a polynomial say, say for example gn which is of degree say d plus 1 you can see that uh, say let me just simply take this polynomial n power d plus 1 this is a polynomial you can see that this is not in n power d class so here what uh, i wanted to just quickly mention that if you take those polynomials of same degree whatever the lower order terms what are the coefficients that you have you can quickly uh, understand that i hope all these things that you would have uh, learned and you have done in uh, other courses particularly in algorithms also you have used all these things you can say that a polynomial of uh, degree d is of same rate of growth with uh, any polynomial of degree d what are the coefficients and the lower order terms and what are the coefficients so th that is a uh, theta class of n power d that you have now using this i will define an important class called uh, p so what is this this is i will define it as now union time n power d uh, d is a natural numbers running over natural numbers so what is the meaning of this this is p is that is p is the class of languages which are decidable in polynomial time because if you take any language which is decidable in time t which is a polynomial you know that is in time t class now that that t if it is a polynomial it is in the class of time n power d where d is the degree of that particular polynomial now we have taken union of all those languages i mean all those classes so this p we are defining the script p i am writing distinguishing uh, between uh, some other uh, you know normal letters or wherever i would be using so this class p i have defined to be the class of all those languages which are decidable in polynomial time now if you ask for examples of course 
there are uh, what are the examples in the previous lecture that we have discussed they are all uh, clearly in polynomial time i have given some linear time uh, uh, languages which are decidable in linear time particularly regular languages which are decidable in 2 n plus 4 time and we have some uh, example discussed that uh, is working in uh, uh, quadratic time and uh, what are all the languages many languages so far we have discussed here they are all in clearly in p because what are the decidus that we have uh, constructed you can verify that they are working in they are working in polynomial time there is a polynomial time uh, 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 decider to compute uh, the to decide those languages now so thus for the class p i am not giving uh, any more examples because we are we are already equipped with many of uh, many of the examples now i'll talk about a new concept uh, called np what is that np this is essentially non deterministic variant of the class p p we have just defined now i look for the non determinism when i am looking for the non determinism particularly non deterministic turing machine the way that we have introduced that is not a decider so it is not actually taking a decision on the inputs in, in contrast with the uh, standard turing machine so we will include that feature when i am talking when i am uh, introducing the uh, time bound on non deterministic machine and accordingly we will define the class np first let me start with uh, associating time uh, to a non deterministic machine so for that let me start so let t from natural numbers to natural numbers this is a time function be a function and consider a language l or some alphabet let me say sigma not star a language as earlier now i will start with a non deterministic machine instead of standard deterministic uh, uh, turing machine we say a non deterministic turing machine non deterministic turing machine say so, i may call it as m q sigma this is the transition relation there q not the initial state with uh, the alphabet under consideration is subset of the sigma alphabet of that and this accepts l in non deterministic time i don't want to call it as time because the variance is there i call it as non deterministic time t so this time what we are associating for a non deterministic machine we call it as it is accepting this machine is accepting l in non deterministic time t if the following holds following holds what are the condition i write now the holds so what is that for all x in sigma not star you take any string if x is in l if and only if if you give that as input to the machine so in this format we give it will halt in time t in within t number of steps of course when it is halting what is there on the tape it is not a decider so i don't expect any s or no sort of thing but it will leave some something on the tape that means for some y z in uh, sigma star something and of course a in sigma and this t what it has to maintain it should be less than or equal to t mod x so the number of steps it takes to compute on it by the time it holds you know the number of steps it takes is less than or equal to t mod x with respect to the input parameter mod x the length of x so what we have defined essentially this is a non deterministic variant of the earlier uh, in the earlier lecture whatever that we have defined uh, about time time bounded turing machine here when you are considering non determinism we know that there is no decision here which is uh, something like saying yes or no on a given input so if it is halting it has to halt within the required number of steps that is with respect to the time we are, we are associating t so now as earlier we say this is a continuation of 
that definition, we say that L is acceptable in non deterministic time t in non deterministic time t if there is a non deterministic Turing machine there is a non deterministic Turing machine that accepts L in non deterministic time t. Non deterministic time t. So, we know just we have defined when do we say it will be a non deterministic Turing machine accepts a language in non deterministic time t. Now, if you want to say a particular language is uh, acceptable in non deterministic time t you should have one non deterministic Turing machine doing this uh, performing that. So, so, in connection to that as earlier now I introduce this notation n time a class. So, n time t I mean all those languages L which are decidable L is, uh, sorry because this is non determinism here which is acceptable because there is no decision here acceptable in non deterministic time t. In non deterministic time t. So, as earlier when we have talked about uh, time t those are the languages which are decidable in time t because that is a deterministic Turing machine here we are having a non deterministic version. So, n time t is all those languages which are acceptable because non deterministic machine would not take a decision if the string is in the language it will simply accept. So, so within the required time it has to accept. So, acceptable in non deterministic time t n t. So, extending this now let me introduce the class what I was talking about n p. I am using script letters to distinguish from other classes that would be talking about union n time n power d. So, d runs over natural numbers. So, what is the meaning of this? This is all those languages which are data uh, uh, sorry acceptable in non deterministic polynomial time because n power d when I am writing. So, n time a polynomial if you look at you know this class is essentially same as n time n power d where degree is uh, uh, degree is of that particular polynomial. So, we know this. So, if we if I am considering union of all those languages on all those classes. So, that is what I am calling n p. So, in words I can say that these are those languages which are acceptable by uh, which are acceptable in non deterministic polynomial time instead of just saying non deterministic time that time I am associating it should be a polynomial. So, n p is the class of all those languages which are acceptable in non deterministic polynomial time t. Now, you can uh, quickly see that you can quickly see that we know that every deterministic Turing machine can be seen as a non deterministic Turing machine. So, that is a restricted version and uh, so clearly as time t or in particular I can write n d it is a subset of n time n d we have this this class p is contained in n p is very quickly to see because every deterministic Turing machine can be treated as a non deterministic Turing machine and thus I can say that p is contained in n p. Now, the question is whether these two are equal. So, the question is whether or not p equal to n p. Now, this particular problem in mathematics and uh, computer science this is one of the you know uh, toughest problems and uh, and uh, this problem has such an importance 
the importance of uh, with respect to the importance of this particular problem you know this is one of the seven problems listed uh, for a million dollar prize uh, by clay, uh, clay mathematical institute so clay mathematical institute just to uh, just to give some uh, you know importance of this with respect to that clay mathematical institute uh, uh, clay mathematics institute has announced million dollar prize for uh, one for each of the seven problems and only one problem so far is settled and this is one of the problems among the seven problems and uh, if one settles this that means to prove whether p equal to np or p not equal to np it is very clear that p is contained in np now the point is whether there is a language in np which is not in p so that is the question so if one can address this problem one, uh, who will get uh, he will get he or she will get 1 million dollar uh, uh, prize as per the, the announcement of clay mathematics institute. So, this is one of the important and long standing problem uh, in mathematics and computer science. Now, in order to talk about more details about this particular problem whether p equal to n p I will little more create some background to understand about this in this lecture. That is let me start with this particular concept a function a function f from sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star is said to be computed by A deterministic are computed in time t by a deterministic because now I have to mention earlier I used to simply say Turing machine because now we are talking about non determinism also simultaneously. I will now mention that deterministic Turing machine. deterministic Turing machine m. So, let me write q sigma delta q naught f and only if for all x in sigma 1 star if you give that as input. So, the number of steps I am counting that is the main uh, variant here so, f x the output that you are getting with t number of steps for some t t less than equal to mod x. So, so, in connection to this definition I will now make as earlier that we say f is computable in time t in time t if there is if there is a deterministic Turing machine I will simply write a Turing machine a Turing machine m that computes that computes f in time t. So, look here whatever the earlier uh, procedures or you know concepts that we have discussed with respect to Turing machines, we are now quantifying them. For example, in the previous lecture when I am talking about time bounded Turing machines, for standard Turing machine I have taken there I have considered only the uh, so called a decider and a quantifying uh, a quantifying method of that. That means, we have the, the decision we are quantifying. So, with respect to a particular number of steps the particular number is associated through a function. So, we are calling it as a time function. Similarly, when I am talking about non determinism, so for non deterministic machine also we have associated the number of steps because when it is taking when it when it is computing certain thing. So, the number of steps that we are counting and we, with respect to a particular time function that we are associated uh, with respect to which we are talking about uh, we are associating a time function. Now, when I am talking about standard Turing machine you know there is a concept a, a Turing machine computes a particular function. Now, again 
in that particular context also we are quantifying it that means we are associating a time function to that particular concept now in the similar uh, thing i need not actually I, uh, I need not introduce but as a uh, as a formalism i am introducing here so if you take a function a computable function that means a turing computable function means there is a turing machine which computes that fo particular function now if you want to associate time to that how many steps it is taking to compute whatever the uh, uh, on the input that you are giving you know in a if a turing machine computes a particular function on every input it will leave certain some output suppose x is given as input fx if f is a uh, particular function you, it is halting by printing fx as output now when we are associating time to that as earlier now here you will count the number of steps and the number of, if you want to say it is computing in particular time capital t the time function so the number of steps it is taking should be less than or equal to the capital t of that particular uh, string the length in terms of that so that is what is the variant now we are uh, discussing here so a function f from sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star you take a function which is a computable function if you say there is a turing machine which is computing this but now when i am associating time to this it is computed in time t by a deterministic turing machine m if for all the inputs that is from sigma 1 star when you take the number of steps it is taking if i write t so it should halt within uh, t number of steps where t should be less than or equal to capital t mod x and now a function f is computable in time t if there is a turing machine that computes in time t so this is the variant that we have defined now whatever the concepts that is associated to uh, that is associated to turing machines we will now in this particular topic complexity issues when we are discussing we will uh, we will give the parallel uh, formalisms and discuss with respect to the quantifying that anyway this concept i am introducing because we have just mentioned we have just talked about a problem whether p is equal to np what i will do i will introduce an important class of uh, languages which are actually very much useful in order to understand well about the problem p equal to np so in the direction i will introduce a class called uh, you know np complete uh, uh, np complete languages np complete uh, the class np complete so uh, for which you know i will just build up the background now through these uh, concepts and now we will talk about uh, the np complete uh, languages in this particular context in case if you have the t to be polynomial in case t is a polynomial in case t is a polynomial we say that function f is polynomial time computable so this is polynomial time computable so just we have mentioned when do we say a function is computable in time t that we have mentioned now if this particular time what we are associating if this time if it is a polynomial then we say it is a polynomial time computable function now just to look at examples if you take a language which is already in p that means there is a polynomial time decider for that if this is if you take a language in p then this is a simple example straightforward example then the function if i consider the function fl defined by i define naturally this way y n if x is in l otherwise suppose if you define like this you know the corresponding the corresponding turing machine on x it prints y if it is in l if x is not in l it prints n you know this thing now since this is in p there is a polynomial time decider so the same decider you know computes this particular this thing is clearly and thus clearly this is a polynomial time computable function a polynomial time computable function this is clearly a polynomial so fl whatever we have defined here so the same decider will be 
useful. Let me give some other example which you may understand better. Of course, that is a uh, trivial and straightforward example what I have discussed now. Let me take this take sigma 1 to be say singleton a very simple example. So, that you know you will understand this concept better consider singleton b if I define the function f from sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star you know the strings of sigma 1 star they are simply composed uh, a power n form. What do I consider f of a power n I will simply send it to b power n n greater than equal to 0. So, I will just define like this. Now, you can give a decider for this uh, you can you can give a, a Turing machine which computes this function as earlier our input format this is we have fixed. So, so certain number of years that you will give on the tape you are starting here. So, what do you do you may simply go through this and pre replace each a by b this is what you will print and you come back to this position and halt. So, either while going you can print bis or while coming you can print bis whatever your wish take a left move if you have a print b there and take a left move keep doing this when you receive blank here you may simply take r ash that means you will come to this end from here you will come to this end. So, because you have to halt finally here by the time you know you, you would have replaced all the a's if they are available with b's. Now, you can ask me because when I am constructing this particular Turing machine the alphabet can be uh, can have this blank a's and b's because b need to be printed. Now, in this particular context if you receive say for example, b you can define arbitrarily because we do not want to uh, handle that here. So, you define arbitrarily whatever that you want because particularly when you take the input which is in sigma 1 star because you look at the definition the way that we have defined. If you take x in sigma 1 star if you give that as input what are the number of steps it is taking to halt with the output f x because x we are taking from sigma 1 star only. So, I am not worried about if there is b. So, you define arbitrarily you define arbitrarily. So, this particular decider this particular decider what is doing if you have input a power n then it will print b power n on the tape and it will halt how much time it will take. Suppose, if you look at that look here you are starting from here you take a left move you, you take a left move here and then left move and so on. So, if you have n number of a's here you take n number of left moves and one more left move to this. So, there are n plus 1 left moves and uh, while coming you are replacing each a by b that means, there are n number of printing steps because each a is. So, n number of printing steps. So, from this position when you want to go here again you have n plus 1 right moves the total is 3 n plus 2 steps that you are taking. So, you can quickly see that this particular function if you consider T n to be 3 n plus 2 this function f I have considered f is computable in time t in particular this t is a polynomial and therefore, is a polynomial time computable function. polynomial time computable function. Likewise, you know just to make this uh, concept familiar you know you can consider several examples of this sort and practice and see say some more let me just give you here. If I consider say sigma 1 equal to sigma 2 equal to say a b I may consider a function say for example, g from sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star. I give like this if you take any string x I give x dash where x dash is obtained from x which is obtained from x by replacing a by b and vice versa. Suppose, if you consider this function what you are supposed to do wherever a is there on the input tape you have to replace it by b wherever b is there you have to replace it by a that is what you have to do you will scan through that once and you will come back and uh, halt the original position because the output format is when you give x you have to print f x on the tape and halt at the right blank. So, 
this kind of function also you can quickly realize that I hope you can observe that it will you can make it in 3 n plus 2 time. So, 3 n plus 2 is a polynomial this is also a polynomial time computable function and there are several such you know deciders that you have uh, several such uh, uh, Turing machines that you have constructed to compute functions. So, you can now cross check like whether, whether it is taking polynomial time what is the polynomial that you are getting accordingly you can report that uh, some of the examples which are uh, computable in polynomial time. Now, let me give another definition here let L 1 a language over sigma 1 and L 2 a language over sigma 2 be languages. So, I am defining this now what I am defining a polynomial time computable function computable function f from sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star is called a polynomial time transformation so i am introducing this technical term here polynomial time tra transformation from l1 to l2 if and only if for each x in sigma 1 star the following holds what is that x is in l1 if and only if this f of x is in l2 now can you guess what is the corresponding concept without uh, talking about the time here look what is the concept we have talked about if you consider language l1 or sigma 1 l2 or sigma 2 we are talking about a computable function from sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star satisfying a particular property what is that particular property x is in l1 if and only if f of x is in l2 what is this particular concept because when you want to talk about this you have we have discussed in the context of undecidability the reduction there is a reduction mapping as we say a language l1 is reducible to a language l2 when do we say that the, if there is a computable function from sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star satisfying this condition x is in l1 if and only if f of x is in l2 so this is essentially quantitative version this is quantitative version with respect to time correspond uh, uh, of reducibility concept so i can also say this particular uh, thing because in which case what you have written the notation l1 less than or equal to l2 l1 less than or equal to l2 that means l1 is reducible to l2 so corresponding to that now this in this particular context i will put a p here which means that l1 is polynomial time reducible time reducible to l2 so we know, you know already the concept l1 reducible to l2 that means there should be a turing computable function from sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star satisfying this particular condition whatever i am marking here now we are associating to that uh, computable function it should work in polynomial time so it should be a polynomial time computable function f and therefore corresponding to that polynomial time i am just uh, subscripting this p also here in this notation so we call this as l1 is polynomial time reducible to l2 you can now say instead of calling this polynomial time transformation if you want you can also use this this is called polynomial time reduction is also you can call it as also called as polynomial time reduction polynomial time reduction so the, you are you are taking the, the reduction takes place from l1 to l2 moreover this reduction takes polynomial time so the notation that we have introduced is this now using this particular uh, concept 
let me give the definition of NP complete class, what we are looking for, this is for NP complete language. A language L say over some sigma or is said to be NP complete is said to be NP complete if and only if the first condition we put is that language should be in N p number 2 for all L dash if you take any language in N p what do I require this L dash should be reducible to L in polynomial time. So, that is for every L dash in N p there is a polynomial time transformation. Let me write shortcut polynomial time transformation, polynomial time transformation from L dash to L. So, in other words, every language in NP is reducible to L in polynomial time. So, the class NP complete, the class NP complete we define like this. Clearly, this is a subset of NP. We are now, we can, uh, you know, suppose if this is NP class, we have already observed that this is, you know, P is contained in NP, but we do not know whether there is, uh, whether there are some elements here or not in this gap. And now, this statement which is given in number 2, we also people call it as N p hardness, N p hardness. What is the meaning of this? That means, the problem L is as hard as any N p problem. That means, if you reduce a problem in N p to this, you know this statement that if L is soluble, then L dash is soluble. So, that means, this problem L is as hard as any NP problem, therefore, this is called it as this condition is also called it as NP hard. So, this if I write like this NP hard, this intersection because a problem which is in NP and NP hard, this is what is NPC, this are what NP complete problems, NPC. Now, I have drawn purposefully you know by just with uh, marking like this. Now, I will present to you one important result as follows. Anyway, let me just restate that once again re emphasize a language L in sigma star is said to be N p complete if it is in N if it is N p as well as N p hard that is how this diagram is clearly showing this intersection of N p and P hard is essentially N p complete problems. Now, the following result will be helpful to understand the big picture about the problem uh, with respect to NP complete class. The theorem is this, the theorem is let L be an NP complete language. Then, P equal to N P if and only if L is in P. You see the statement. If a language is N P complete and if that language is also in P, then P equal to N P and P equal to N P is possible if L is in P. That means, to get that million dollar uh, price, what you have to do? if you can identify an NP complete language which is in P, that is all. So, understanding this particular uh, concept you know through NP complete is, is giving some characteristic property 
about the problem p equal to np. First let us prove this because one side is very obvious, very clear that is this portion. Suppose L is in P, this implies there is a deterministic Turing machine. Okay, so, okay, this side is obvious, well, the forward direction is obvious, let me consider that first. Suppose P equal to P equal to NP. Then it is very clear that since L is NP complete from the definition you see since L is NP complete L is in NP from the definition of NP complete L is in NP. So, that and since P we have assumed P equal to this P equal to NP you can say that L is also in P. So, this side is very obvious from the definition of NP complete. So, now let us consider this part. Suppose L is in P, suppose L is in P. This implies there is a deterministic Turing machine say ML. So, this implies there exists a deterministic Turing machine. Let me write simply Turing machine. M L that decides L in polynomial time. L in polynomial time. So, let me say that is P L the polynomial corresponding polynomial let me say it is P L. Now, what we have what we have to show P equal to N P to show P equal to N P we know clearly that P is contained in N P. Now, if you choose an arbitrary language in N p, we will observe that that is also in p. So, that means, let me start with an arbitrary language, let L dash in N p be arbitrary. Let us take an arbitrary language from there, be an arbitrary language. Okay, let us consider an arbitrary language. Since L, now let us use the hypothesis that L is NP complete. Since L is NP complete, what do we have? This L dash should be reducible to L in polynomial time. That means we have this L dash is less than or equal to PL. So that is there is a polynomial time transformation f from this is a polynomial time transformation. Let me write like this. Uh, there is a polynomial time transformation under consideration say sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star because L, L is an NP complete language I said. So, L is a subset of sigma 2 star if you assume. So, there is a polynomial train, this is a polynomial train transformation which reduces L dash to L. So, that means, this is a Turing computable function that computes uh, that is computed by some Turing machine m f in polynomial time in polynomial time say let me call it as say p f. So, I hope I am clear here you start with an arbitrary language L dash in n p take an arbitrary language. Now, since L is NP complete, we have L dash less than or equal to PL. That means L dash is reducible to L in polynomial time. That means there is a polynomial time transformation F from the underlying alphabets. So here I am assuming that is L dash is uh, L dash is a subset of sigma one star. L is subset of sigma two star. So F is a computable function which is computed by Turing machine. So this is a Turing machine. So this is computed by Turing machine MF in time PF. Now, what do I do? I will give you a Turing machine which computes L dash in polynomial time, which decides uh, which decides L dash in polynomial time. So, that this is an arbitrary language L dash goes in P and thus you will have that P equal to N P. So, what is the Turing machine? 
you can also quickly uh, see this if you consider m f m l what is m l m l is a turing machine that decides l if i compose these two turing machines m f and m l so in this in this form now you observe that if you give any input to m f what happens from sigma 1 star whatever that you give by the time so let me draw a small picture here what i am the composition you know this kind of construction so the input x say for example if you give to this what are the output because this mf produces fx this fx will be given as input to ml and ml is a decider it says yes or no this is the this is the idea now you observe that if you give x to mf it gives fx and fx is fed to ml if it says yes what is the meaning of that fx is in the language l if it says no fx is not in the language l right so now using this condition since f is a polynomial time transformation from sigma 1 uh, to sigma 2 star what is the condition associated to this here whatever that x is in l dash if and only if f of x is in l this is the condition associated to this when it is a polynomial train transformation now if fx is is in l then corresponding to that it says yes if fx is not in l then it says no that means if and only if this particular turing machine this mf ml says yes y on x i am just marking here once again if you give an arbitrary input x from sigma 1 star from this alphabet mf will compute and leaves fx as output so with the condition that x belongs to l dash if and only if fx fx is in l with this condition and now fx when you give input to ml it says s it says yes only when, only when f x is in L otherwise it says no. So, what is the condition we have f x is in L if and only if this m f m L this, this particular Turing machine says yes on x. So, that means clearly this m f m L this Turing machine m f m L decides the language L dash. So, what did I get? We have got a decider to decide the language L dash. Now, how much time it takes? If you look at that, since MFML, how much time it is taking? If you look at this particular one, by the time it finishes, as we have assumed PF is that particular function uh, polynomial, so it takes this much time. This much time to, to get the output here f x and what will be the length of f x if you look at the length of f x will be maximum this much this is the maximum length of f x. Now, on this particular uh, output f x we will be applying this m l where p l is the polynomial that much time it will take. So, sum of these two. So, clearly some of this this is a polynomial with the parameter mod x and this is a polynomial composition of a polynomial. So, clearly this is a polynomial clearly this is a polynomial So, that means for L dash we have got a decider which decides in polynomial time and thus L dash is in P. So, since L dash is arbitrary we have P is equal to N P. So, through this result you understand the importance of n p complete languages. So, if you know some so just look at this statement if you know some n p complete language if you can obtain a polynomial time uh, decider for this then p equal to n p the problem will be settled. But of course, uh, getting such a language n p complete language and uh, in, in, in fact observing a language is n p complete is very difficult because if you look at the definition you have to reduce every n p language to that in polynomial time. So, there, there has to that, that is one 
hard condition to observe and uh, you know even if you get an NP complete language in hand observing that it has a polynomial time is even tougher uh, task. So, that means to show that p equal to NP we have a characterization here. So, through this I am just presenting you know the uh, concept of NP complete through the concept of NP complete and we have observed the importance of NP complete languages as well. We will continue these discussions in the future lectures you know by identifying certain NP complete languages etcetera.